My name is Ramsey. Welcome back to Slay the Spire. We're going to be doing a challenge run in this episode. It is the second challenge that we are going to be doing from the creator, Sean Chaney. Uh, it is called The Alphabetical Run. Be prepared to read many rules. And I'll extend that to you. Be prepared to hear many. We're about to probably go through, I want to say, about three minutes of reading out the rules and then get into the run. The rules. Ascension 3, because why not? No additional mods. I can choose the character. We'll go through what character I'm going to choose later. Each turn, you must play your cards in alphabetical order. If you play a strike plus, you may not then play a strike or a defend, right? So it is typically considered alphabetical order, uh, or rather most style guides would consider alphabetical order to include a shortened word being before an elongated version of it in the alphabet, like, you know, Bub before Barbituate, for example. So that's why it's Strike Plus locks out Strike. Uh, you must defeat enemies in alphabetical order. If enemies have the same name, you must fight them left to right. AoE cards are totally fine to play, however. Your relics must be taken in alphabetical order, including the starting relic. This will point out which character I want to take pretty easily. Uh, for example, if you take Kunai, you may not then take Happy Flower. It's probably not a good idea to play as the Silent. Well, uh, a good point well made, Sean. You must maintain alphabetical order in your potions. Make your best or, uh, make your best effort rather to purchase your items from the shop in alphabetical order. This doesn't really have any effect, so if you mess it up, whatever. If you play in Tropic Brew, you must throw away potions until those potions are in order. If you have an opportunity to take an immediately use a fruit juice potion, it must be in order. For example, if you had an attack potion in slot 1, a weak potion in slot 2, you would have to first throw away the weak potion and then take the fruit juice. You choose the next room alphabetically. Enemy, elite, sorry, elite, enemy, merchant, rest, treasure, unknown in that order of priority. Obviously, you'll have to wrap around once you reach the end. So if you were to rest, try and pick a treasure, then an unknown, and then wrap it back around to elite. Room choice is the only choice that can wrap around back to the beginning of the alphabet. Don't do this car uh, with cards played or relics. You need to consider your next room choice when choosing. If there are two of the same room, you may choose freely. Alternatively, if you think this rule sucks, go enable certain future. Now, I don't necessarily think the rule sucks, but I do think I would almost certainly accidentally break that rule multiple times. So I will be enabling certain future. And you may choose card wards freely. When inspecting your deck, it must be sorted in alphabetical order. And enjoy in an orderly fashion. Well, I haven't been able to choose uh, card wards freely in a challenge run for a pretty long period of time. It'll be nice to be able to do that. So Ironclad Ascension 3. Ironclad starts with Burning Blood, so it gives us the widest swath of relics that we're still available to take. And then it was a certain path, certain future. There we go. All right. Let's see how this goes. So one of the other reasons I wanted to take the Ironclad is because our early deck is a little bit more slanted towards being able to play alphabetically. We've got the Bash, which we do by necessity, the fact that it's a vulnerability applier, uh, want to play before we play other attacks. And it's a B versus an S. It's neat. It's just a little bit neat. So that's a bash, then a strike. Cool. B and S, we're fine. Oh. If you play a strike plus, you may not then play a strike or a defend. Can I play the same card? There's no example that says whether or not I would be able to play the same card. Oh, also, when inspecting my deck, it has to be in alphabetical order. There we go. Uh, yeah, there's there's nothing here as to whether or not I'm able to play the same card. Due to the fact that it would make the first floor completely lethal if I couldn't, I'm, I'm ruling that in. Strike is fine. Very good. I probably don't want to include that many cards in this deck because the more cards that I include in this deck, the far worse off we are in terms of being able to actually order and sequence out our turns. Anger? 
I've also got to keep in mind, right? That Anger would have to be played before Bash. But maybe I just do Anger and a bunch of draw and try and, try and go through with that. Boss Relics are going to be a little bit difficult. Especially because, like, Cursed Key is the one that I want to hit the most. But if I don't get offered that and, like, my only energy relic offered is, like, Sozu, I lock myself out of most of the relics in the game by taking that. Anger? Yeah. I'll take it. It'll help me push through some stuff. Golden Idol. I probably don't want this. Yeah, and I don't necessarily have to take it. Locks me out of a lot of relics, especially the boss relics in particular. Bag of Marbles is already locked out. Can't take it. BA versus BU. Uh, anger, double defense, strike. I, I don't know what cohesive deck we're going to be able to format out of these rules. Because obviously you can't go with like a perfected... Oh, can you go with a perfected strike belt? I think so. Thunderclap is a little bit of a problem. It's, it's a vulnerability applier, so you want to play it really, really, really early on, but you can't. It's quite heavy. Uh, Wild Strike would be played at the end of a turn regardless. And it's another strike card. All right. Let's try and see if we can get Perfected Strikers built. I'm going to also throw the poison out here because we will be in this fight for a pretty long period of time. So I think I'm going to get the full effect out of that poison potion. Well, not the full effect, but you know, the most impactful parts of it I think I'll get. Anger. Bash strike. There we go. Kunai. Damn, Kunai. There's armaments, combust, clothesline. Kunai is really good, though. Kunai is really good. Especially because I have that anger in the deck. Kunai is just going to get better and better. Upgrade the bash so that I can push through the boss at the end of this floor pretty easily. Yep. I gotta remember, I have to play Anger before Bash if I want to play it at all. Thankfully, it didn't matter. That's another Wild Strike, but it's up against Fiendfire, which is a take. Tiny Test. No, I can't take that. Skipping all the way to T uh, is just too much. All right. I'll throw that Anger just to get another copy of it in the deck. And then next turn, bash, hopefully, like, bash, anger, strike. No, just bash, strike. All right. Give me the angers. That'll do. Dang it. I was trying to complete the triplicate of attacks for the sake of kunai, but I accidentally played a strike, which means that I can no longer play a defense. I am going to make a lot of mistakes doing this because I've not done this before. Uh, defend first. No, I'm going to triple attack. But yeah, I'm going to make a lot of mistakes on my initial attempts at a lot of these ones because I've not done them before. I've played the game in significantly different fashions. So I've got a lot of muscle memory to work against. Or even just memory. Ornamental fan. After you play three attacks in single turn, gain four block. That is... I want it. Can I take it? I don't know if I can take it, though. I really want it. Because if we get enough stuff that is just based around whether or not we attack enough times in a single turn, then we build a deck that just attacks three times a turn, and we're fine. Probably just defend, defend, defend. We should have time. Anger, Bash, Strike. We're following the rules there. Anger, Strike, Strike, Wild Strike there as well. Uh, explosive can't be after speed. 
So I would have dropped speed. There you go. Perfected strike. Rage is a problem because obviously whenever you play an attack this turn, gain three blocks. So I would want to play rage before all of my attacks, but any attack that is lower than uh, or prior to R in the alphabet isn't going to work with that. Take the perfected strike there. I mean, I think Perfected Strike might be the right build for all of this. Enemy will still be vulnerable next turn. We'll just kill them with a Fiend Fire then. I can't Wild Strike before Fiend Fire. Which would have been lethal. But no, I'm not allowed to. Self-imposed rules! Not self-created, but self-imposed, definitely. Uh, can't take a limit break here. I don't have any strength up. Probably none of these, I think. Got a late shop. Neat, neat. Good to see it. I'll take the upgrade on the perfected strike. There's nothing here that's limiting my upgrades, is there? Not that I can see. There's a twin strike on offer as well as a shrug it off. Those are just valuable cards. Dropkick's also really good here as well because we do have the extended vulnerability. Pen nib. I can't take that because the ornaments... Oh, hang on. Hang on. I can't take that because of the ornamental fan, but let's let's actually buy these in the correct order. Uh, you're going through the alphabet in your head trying to figure out whether T or S is the first letter. S-T-U-V. Okay, so it's, there we go. Flex has a similar problem to the previous turn down. Rage. Not being able to necessarily be played before each and every attack it would be affecting. I mean, F, F comes before P, and most of mine will be P's or S's, right? P for perfected strike, pommel strike, S's for strike... Uh, Etc. Yeah. I don't know if I remove defense from this deck, though. Maybe I don't remove anything here. Maybe I save my money. Yeah, I think maybe I save my money here. Alright. Fiend fire upgrade. I hate to have to do it, but I guess I will. Hey! Bash and Dropkick in the first turn, and in an order that I can play them. Beautiful. I'm not going to put the enemy on the ground this turn, because I have the opportunity to probably trigger the kunai again the next turn. That's nah, not going to do it. Q-R-S-T. Okay, yeah. Hey, if you think it's funny that I don't know the alphabet off by heart, <laughs> let me tell you about the fact that I also do not know left from right. <laughs> Just can't do those things. That's okay, though. Anger first, then QRS. Okay, cool. Then shrug it off. <sighs> really wish I had access to bash still. Strike and twin strike. So now Dropkick is useless in this cycle, unfortunately. Perfected and then Wild puts the enemy back on the ground. Okay, defend, defend, strike easily. And dang it, Bash. You have to be in the same hand as Fiendfire, eh? Disappointed. One, two. Rock kick. I drop kicked before I defended. Yep. Drop kicked before I defended. I was locked out of playing those defense there. Okay. This one should just be strike. Wild strike. That does more damage because if I went strike, strike, then the enemy would have already curled up and then the wild strike would have all gone against their armor rather than through. Main problem here is whether or not... Never mind, I drew lethal. 
Impervious, Bludgeon, and Barricade. Uh... Bludgeon? I'll take Bludgeon. Because I would probably take Sneko Eye as a Relic art. Hey, Q-R-S-T-U-V. Yeah, I would take Sneko Eye after this. Happily. Damn it. And we did get off of the Cursed Key as well. Coffee Dripper, can't take that. Can't take the Cursed Key. Uh, Astrolabe, can't take that. So I have to skip a boss relic. This is what I thought was going to be the hardest thing about this run. Having to skip boss relics based on the relics that you've already taken. That's like the crux of the challenge here that I can see at the very least. Could play three attacks this turn. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. But that, that is going to be the hardest problem here. And obviously parbing if I was in charge of that. Thankfully, I'm not though. I can't shrug it off then, Fiend Fire. Fiend Fire would be 40 damage to the enemy. The enemy has slightly more than that in terms of HP. Unless I also throw the Explosive Potion, but I don't necessarily think I need to do that this turn. But I'm not killing next turn. If I had the ability to shrug it off and then Fiend Fire, I'd be totally down. But I can't. Where? I'll accept this 11. I mean, I'm only accepting 5 because I'm killing the enemy next turn and then I heal 6 back up as a result of the Burning Blood. Dex Potion? Yeah, that fits in. Flex? Maybe Flex fits into my deck right now. Only Dropkick, Bludgeon, Bash, and Anger would not be capable of being affected by it. It comes pre-upgraded and it's in a deck that necessarily wants to pick up more attacks. Yeah, I think I can take Flex here. Again, we can't Fiend Fire after the Shrug It Off. So after Shrug It Off, I would only be able to play Strike, Wild Strike. Eh. Got one plated armor off the enemy. Hell yeah. Okay, it's definitely Anger, Defend, Defend, Flex, Strike. A lot of these turns will just be completely ordered by the game. No input from me. Maybe I should have gone for the bash there. Yeah, I had bludgeon coming up. I definitely should have queued up the bash. Uh... I'm not really getting three attacks off in the same turn as often as I'd hoped. I took Bludgeon exclusively for the possibility of picking up Snekawai immediately thereafter, but without that, it's a very, very heavy card that I really don't want to play that often. Taking five extra damage here so that I can try and actually push through this elite. Perfected and then wild. Neat. That's another perfected. We already know what we're committing to here. Oh, it's uh, perfected then normal strike, right? I can do AoE next turn. That could be neat. Bash drop kick does work. I have to anger first as well. Good memory, Ryan. You finally actually did remember that. And wild strike and explosive potion. Hell yeah. Not a bad turn if I do say so myself. And I did just then. This one's not going to work. All right, so we'll shrug it off, and then strike, twin strike. We need, like, a battle trance in this deck. That would be so damn good here. Uh, We'll drop a double defend, flex, and then single strike. Should be able to kill in the next turn. Yeah. That'll do it. Block Potion. Uh, I'm going to drop the Dex Potion and take a Block Potion. Seems more impactful for us. Hey, look, it's Battle Trance. If, uh, if it isn't the card I've just been asking for. Or the card for which I've just been asking, rather. I'm almost certainly going to be using the Block Potion on the next turn. Yeah. Let's defend, then shrug it off. Single Strike. Happily hit as much defense there as possible because it's still not going to be enough to fully defend me. Oh, I hate that the bludgeon isn't enough lethal here. 
think I'm going to double defend flex strike. Mm -hmm. At least manage to defend a little this turn. We'll anger first and battle trance. Can't anger again, unfortunately. Can perfected strike though. Strength potion. Yep, can totally take that. Uh, brutality. At the start of turn, lose one HP and draw a card. Extra draw power is really, really good for us, but can I afford the negative of brutality? I think I can. I think it'll just help me in boss fights. I don't necessarily have to play it in floor fights. Uh, bash, brutality, strike. I think I've been following the rules so far, but let me do a double check here. Play your cards in alphabetical order. Yes. Defeat enemies in alphabetical order. No, I've 100% not been doing that. Have I actually been in that many AoE fights, though? I don't know if I've been in any AoE fights. No, I've been in an AoE fight. The Cultists. I was in the Cultist AoE fight. Okay, yeah, so I've broken that rule. Um, I will keep a closer eye on that one. There are a lot of rules to keep in mind. You have to understand. Relics, I'm totally fine on. Uh, and maintain alphabetical order for the potions. Okay. Ooh, look at that low-cost bludgeon. Let's pop that out. Use the cheap defend. More expensive bludgeon as well. Sorry, more expensive uh, perfected or do I defense? I think I go for the perfected. Yeah, it gives me a pretty likely out this turn for killing. Speed potion, no, can't take that if I've got the strength potion. Can't take the twin strike though. Uh, I I need to upgrade a lot of cards in this deck, but I have to rest. Without a without a boss relic from the first floor, this is gonna be really rough. Perfected strike seems like the type of build that it'll be over to uh, able to actually overcome this negative. But maybe I'm misjudging that. I could defend Fiendfire here. But then I burn out so many of the perfected strikes that actually contribute to our damage. Yeah, I think I just end up dying here. I'll battle trance first, despite the fact that battle trance into drop kick is not how I really want to be playing this turn, but you kind of gotta. Um... Defend, defend, shrug it off. See, the thing is, if I just defend against the Book of Stabbing, I definitely die. So. You are ST. Okay, so it's this, this. Enemy is doing 21 this turn. So I'm, I'm desperately trying to set up for lethal next turn. I don't know where I think that's coming from. Oh, apparently this hand. Anger, perfected, and then Walt. Anchor. Definitely not a relic I can take. I'll take Pommel Strike there, though, and rest in the next space as well. I think we're just dead to the next boss. Smiling Mask is legal, but I have so much money that, like, I don't want to take that and limit myself of the possibility of a couple of different relics that could help. I'll take Ritual Dagger here because it's so impactful. Could actually help us. Receive a bash and store a card. Ah, uh, yes. One of these one of these events you only ever see in low ascension. I don't think I'm going to do this. I don't really like this event, to be entirely honest with you. Because it kind of acts as card removal at the time, but then you have to take the card back later. So it's like a one ever card removal. Yeah, this is going to kill me. All right, so if I did 9 twice, 18, 18, 32, 18, 32 is... 1832 is 50. That'll take out a target on board. So, flex, perfected, twin. That saves me 14 damage. It's relatively effective. Uh, perfected, pommel... Is enough to take out the front line here as well. Probably shouldn't play Brutality here. I could totally see that actually ending up killing me. 
Yeah, it would have killed me this turn. Anger, defend, strike, strike, because I have to play them in that order. Oh, no, it wouldn't have killed me this turn because he's the ornamental fan. All right, fine. Um, bash, ritual dagger. That's not going to be enough because 15 is amplified by 7, so 22, 22, 10, 32, not enough. Worse than that, if I play, if I don't play the Ritual Dagger here, I actually draw a new deck that doesn't yet have Ritual Dagger in it. I think I just have to kill the enemy. Because, like, if I play Shrug It Off to defend myself here, then Ritual Dagger stays in this hand, but I generate a new deck, and then Ritual Dagger goes to the new empty discard pile. So I'm now 30 more cards away from getting my next Ritual Dagger to actually trigger. So I think I just kill. Can't take Blood Vile, obviously. Uh, if Havoc was pre-upgraded, I would take it. Draw two different cards on turn one is mate. Ish, I guess. Maybe rest, heal an additional 15 HP. Q R S T U V Q L M N O P Q R. Okay, yeah, I can take Regal Pillow. I can't take Bag of Preparation. I can't take Clockwork Souvenir. Regal Pillow seems like it's actually pretty essential for me at this point in time, so. I'll take that. I'll also take a Blood Potion. I'm just trying to get myself past this floor, if at all possible. All right. Dang it! Oh, I forgot the enemies. I forgot the order of enemies again. This is a risk that is run with rule sets like this, that I just straight up cannot keep all of them in mind. I have all of the rules up on the other screen. It's just in order to keep like a consistent commentary and running flow, I kind of have to focus on other things at certain times. And that's just, that's just making me fail a couple of these. Uh, Anger Battle Trance. Battle Trance. Battle Trance. QRST. Yeah, so I can't bash past this point. I'll play the Brutality. Okay. QRST. So, let's Twin Strike you. Then... Twin strike you and then wild strike you. Setting up as best we can. Blood potion is the only reason we're going to be making it through this fight, by the way, as well. Pommel into ritual is not lethal on the cultist there. But. Three attacks is lethal, as well as the ability to trigger the ornamental fan, so I'll take it. Uh, A, B, C, D, E, F. Damn. So, okay, so L is after I, so I can't flex Fiendfire, unfortunately. I think I might now be dead. Fiendfire is 50 damage here. Unless I flex before it, but if I flex before it, I'm intentionally breaking the rules. I can't play three attacks this turn, so I can't defend that way. Yeah. Not being able to take an energy relic after the first boss has straight up killed this from. The amount of times that we had like two two cost things in hand that we definitely want to play both of, but we can't is really really limiting i think i probably just need to ignore all relics on the first floor until i get my first boss relic but even then i'm limiting myself really really hardcore and uh preventing myself from picking up elements that actually may help me build a deck around all right we'll give that one more shot one more we shot here Custom, a three. I know that's not on three right now. It's fine. I'll get back to it. And remember the enemies this time, Ryan.
Now I already know your joke is uh, posting in the comment section. Uh, challenge run. Uh, stick to the actual rules of a challenge run, Rhapsody. Ha <laughs> it's, it's not. It's not as easy as you would think. <laughs> if the game does not necessarily itself construct the rule set for you, it can be rough. Oh, that's really bad. Yeah, I thought I had lethal there. I thought that the, the vulnerability was not being calculated, but weakness was being calculated and ruling out the vulnerability, which is why I ended up taking damage there. Uh, take the shrug it off. Just a good card. Um, got to shop in a couple spaces time. I don't really want to do anything now. It's a lot harder to keep the rule set in mind than you might imagine. 24 left. Let's go shrug it off. Double strike, probably. Yep. I mean, I couldn't have even bashed after that, so it had to be double strike. Searing blow. This is really early to see a searing blow, and we actually have some midline upgrades. Yeah. Let's try and do a searing blow. Let's take the money there. Hmm. Do I take Berserk? It has been upgraded. I kind of want like Berserk shrug it off in a card removal. Card removal 74. Berserk is basically 150, so we're up 225. Yeah, we're not going to be able to take all of them. So Berserk then card removal. Yeah, Berserk then card removal. Uh, unfortunately, Berserk needs to be upgraded, but Searing Blow needs to be upgraded even more? I don't know if we're going to be able to get through both of these upcoming elites, but... Eh, we'll be... <laughs> That's how I say that. Uh, we're probably not going to get enough Dax in a turn unless we end up with Bash and Searing Blow in the same hand to actually use all of the energy from Berserk. Just because we'll be drawing dead cards is in skills that we can't really afford to play at the time. Strike. All right, lethal next turn. Ornamental van. No, of course not. Why would I do that to myself? Serum glow phase two though. Well, that's that I'm more into the boot. Okay. Alphabetical order style guides oftentimes will include whether or not the counts. I'm going to say that the counts, and this starts with a T, but that is something that is, again, slightly more up to interpretation than others. Uh, I think I bash Berserk here. Pretty good. Leave this until the next cycle. That's uh, uh that bash wasn't really doing much. Okay. So we can bash double strike in this position. Basically, searing blow exclusively for attack, and everything else should just be defense. Bash. Defend defend. I, I think I should still be able to take the log ball in out of time as long as I draw the Searing blow this turn. If I shrug it off, I draw the searing blow and then I can't play it, so... I have to just double strike this turn. That's really disappointing. That's really, really disappointing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Searing blow. S-E versus S-H. Oh, it's so close as well. Alright. Should be set up for lethal this turn at the very least. Strike. Anchor! Started combo 10 block. Can't take it. Another Searing Blow. Don't want it. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's becoming one of those runs. Uh, I'll use the skill potion to fish for defense here just because, yeah, we des desperately need it. Alright. Berserk. Impervious. Searing Blow Strike. And... Dang it. 
If I draw into Bash, I can't do anything about it, so strike again. The play limiting and relic limiting combined are really, really knocking me for a loop here. Uh, burning Impact, Body Slam, Clash, probably none of those. Searing Blow Strike is actually not even enough to take out a target here. Wild. I'll defend Searing Blow the front line. The front line is the one buffing up, so they're more likely to be continuing to attack. Um, I mean, I am going to be vulnerable this turn anyway, so I may as well Berserk. Yep. I'll also defend, shrug it off, and then strike out this target. So I'm vulnerable for a long time, but the Fungi Beast is going to die. Before it matters. Strength Potion, neat. Good to see it. Double Tap is also actually pretty good here. Double Tap is, thankfully, quite early in the alphabet, so it can still double tap uh, Searing Blow. However, it can't double tap Bash. AoE is one of the big, big, big problems this deck has. Defend, double tap, strike the front line. I mean, I can't really do that much about it right now, so... Oh! Nope, that, had to, that should have been an acid slime first. Alphabetical order. I knew I'd mess something up. Uh, Searing, then shrug. I'm thinking this might be just like shrug double strike. Yeah. So I end up taking a little bit more damage this turn, but if I don't take out these targets, because I know that the spike slimes are just constantly going to be attacking, I just put myself so far behind the eight ball. And double tap strike. Got to make sure. Yep, that's in A to Z as well. Dex Potion can't take that if the Strength Potion's in the first slot. Tomb Strike, Heavy Blade, Wild Strike. Probably none of those. Dex Potion's probably more important for the upcoming fight. That is to say the Hexaghost fight. Uh, Searing Shrug, I think, here. I think I just die in the Hexaghost fight. If I get there, maybe I don't even get there. Because I can rest before the Hexagos fight in order to try and make it... Oh my god, really? Yikes. I can rest before the Hexagos fight in order to try and make it a little bit easier on myself, but every time I rest and steal an upgrade from my Searing Blows, I'm making it far less likely that I can win overall. Iron Wave is just a nice card, especially with Double Tap. All right. So if I rest, I'm healing by 24. 24 puts me up to 31. 31 is... Well, it's flawed to 21 divided by 12 for 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. So the enemy's going to be doing 18 damage on turn 2 if I heal here. And if I don't heal here, they'll be doing 6 damage on turn 2. Fine, I'm going to rest. I actually still don't think we even make it through this boss fight, so. Oh, that Berserk. I really wish I could play it, but this is the, like, this and next turn are the perfect turns for it. There's nothing I can do. I just definitely cannot play it. Uh, Bash Strike. I mean, Bash Strike would matter if it wasn't for the fact that Searing Blow is already in hand. Let's pop that Dex Potion and then Defend Shrug. <clears throat> Defend Shrug Strike. We're taking one damage so far. We're neat. We're neat. I really wish I could double tap that bash. Oh well. Double tap the Iron Wave. Use normal strike. And Searing Blow is still yet to come up. Right, fine. Uh, we'll Berserk. Double Defend Strike. 
Hopefully the enemy is doing something small next turn. That's relatively small. Defend Searing Blow Strike. And now I've just got the extra energy for the rest of the combat. Yeah. Berserker's doing a lot better than I had otherwise maybe expected. That should have been a defend first as well, by the way, so I could protect against that burn. Double tap Iron Wave. Oh, well, hang on. Energy expenditure. So it's defend, double tap, Iron Wave strike. Interestingly enough, double tap already dictates what cards I can use it with. Only the attacks that I intend to play that are next in the alphabetical order. That's something I didn't necessarily consider when I picked it up. Maybe I should have. Alright, so now we're up to the 20 damage turn and I'm dead. Alright, so we'll draw... Oh, they're still doing pretty badly right now. Let's go for the defend, bash, strike. Yeah, this is what I was thinking, right? Unless we had more aggression, we were going to have trouble getting through this fight. But unless we have more defense, we we're going to have trouble living at any point in this fight. So, you know, it's it's a little bit screwy a couple different ways. Yeah. That's, that's going to be my exit stage left right there. I am sorry, Sean. Not only did I break the rules multiple times, but I also absolutely sucked ass and constantly died. Uh, the relic as well as card ordering limitations combined to make it a very, very difficult run. I was actually kind of looking like... I was looking at the run like, oh, that won't be too bad. <sighs> Damn. If only I had remembered to defeat enemies in alphabetical order, I wouldn't feel so bad about it. For the moment, though, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slay the Spire. That has been my attempt at the alphabetical run by Sean Chaney. Hopefully, you've been enjoying yourselves. There is a playlist in the description down below with all of my content on the game past, present, and future. And hopefully, we'll see you next time.